Robbie, you're a member of the organising committee of the end-to-end -end walk, the white and healthy end-to-end -end walk. Record entry this year. Tell us how big it is this year and how it's improved compared to previous years. Yeah, fantastic news. We're, we're all thrilled. The committee of the, the VETS organising committee, the end-to-end -end committee, we're, we're really pleased with this. We've put a lot of work into this and it's a, a sort of a nine-month um, affair. Um, much like the parish walk, uh, the record was 350. We were keen to improve on that, and um, obviously throughout the year we've, we've um, thought of ways and, and how we could, you know, get it by the scruff of the neck and maybe try and get it up to near 400. But uh, three and three weeks ago, it or two weeks ago even, it wasn't looking very good, and it's all happened really in the last week. Events being held on the current course on the west of the island, yeah. I think, for the seventh year this yes, year. Yes, that's right. Yeah. It, the size of the field has doubled in that time, I think, roughly. Yeah, and, I think so, yeah. And yeah. how did that come about? How did you, you end up, or how did the Veterans Club end up organising the walk on, on this course? That, uh, the Banbury Harriers organised it up until 2001. Well, I think it was Manx Harriers. It, it was Manx <laughs> Harriers, was it? Yeah, they, by then. Yeah, yeah by then, <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, they took over. And um, I think it was deemed unsafe. Uh, to do that, so I think um, the vets decided to take it on. Um, so the the first year was two thousand and two. Towards the end of the century, I think it was um, the organising uh, club were feeling a bit uncomfortable about it. You know, with the traffic problems, congestion um, through Onken and uh, St Ninians and Quarterbridge, um, that they, you know, didn't really want too much more to do with it, really. So the, the vets decided that an alternative would be to um, hold it on the western side of the island. On, on the, uh, and uh, as, as you say, it was I think, about 200, I think, in, the, in 2002 or something like that. We've had a very good organising committee, uh, very go-ahead, people, about six or seven people, who haven't altered much in name, I don't think, in the last seven years. And uh, it's just grown from there with, with more and more publicity. You know, you, you begin to learn how to um, market it better. Um, we've got a long way to go to catch up with the parish, of course. But the the, the field has, has virtually doubled in that time, as we say. The um, the number of cars following the event around the course has increased as well. Number of other road users yeah. has increased. Sometimes there are other events. There've been cycling events, yeah. horse riders, and so on. Yeah. How do you, do you combat? Are we not just going to go back to where we were before? We're using quieter roads, but with yeah. more people on them. The, the, Isn't it this, going to be dangerous? This, this is the worry, and, and we're going to end up in a, in a cycle where we're going to find ourselves in the same situation several years ago. Um, we've alleviated some of that, um, and it, that was mainly brought about two years ago through adverse conditions, through the mist and the fog round round table. Um, we've had a, a road closure. Uh, well, I think we had last year as well, actually, but between half one and half four. Where um, that? That's starting at the round table to the Balakalawi roundabout. I think that's about three or four miles. So basically the slot going downhill. If you've got the the narrow roads around Jerby, that, that's a bit of a headache, but we're obviously trying to discourage people like they are in the parish to follow too early. Um, for two and a half miles around Orisdale, where we forbid any... Uh, uh, we forbid any car to follow. Right. Uh, People this, getting to the start, are, the, are you trying to keep the congestion down at the start? Yeah, if, yeah, if, we, if we three, are. We, we are, yes, that's right. Nearly we're, 400 people have all right. taken individual not, cars up. Absolutely, how, how, how absolutely can you help yeah. I think we've, there's, there's more places to park now. Of course, a lot of them are taking coaches, which yeah. we're trying to encourage. Is, um, it, is it too late to get that coach? Uh, I think that's still okay. Yeah. I think that's still okay. Um, Maureen Cox would be the lady to do that, uh, to ask about that. Um, but they're quite full. There's, there's coaches from the South, uh, Peel, and Douglas. As well as the, the possibility of being drop, of dropping out, there's also the possibility yeah. of being disqualified. Yes. Um, tell us about the rules and, and how they'll be enforced in the end to end. Well, it's a B category race, which means. It's not as strict as A category. I, th I think it, it's the the, the straight the straight legged um, rule isn't enforced like it would be, say over a twenty k or, or a national event or something like that. It's a bit more relaxed. So so the um, rule is sorry. So the rule is 
So the rule, the rule is, um, well, you s- still the heel and toe. I mean, it's still so one foot has to touch. Yeah, the absolutely, room. one foot has to touch. But um, we're we're not too strict, but we don't want to be seen as being too lenient either. Where this event is a bit of a soft touch. Um, Steve Taylor is our uh, chief judge. Who's going to win? Right, who's going to win? Right, well, we, we've got six big names there, haven't we? Uh, I don't know if all of them are committed to actually finishing. Um, I have reservations about Ray Pitts. As good as he was walking two months ago, I heard a whisper that he's got a knee injury. Um, the other person I'm not too sure about is Robbie Collister, believe it or not. Um, he'll obviously be keen to defend his, uh, his streak of six wins. Um, but he's just done the, the bike race and he did a 10K uh, three nights ago, and he's obviously in very good shape, very, very fit. I don't think he's done enough walking, long distance walking title, I think. You're very good at saying who's not going to win. You've avoided <laughs> I'm saying just who's eliminating, win. just now, eliminating. We know Get, you I'm getting there. We, we know you don't like parting with your don't, money. Don't, <laughs> so, yeah, we know that you're not going to risk your own the, money, but if one, I was to give you five pounds of my yeah, money, right. what would you put it on? Well, I, I'll tell you what I'll put it on. Um, I would put it on Michael George. Right. Why is that? Uh, I think Michael George, um, he wasn't fit at the parish by his own standards. And I think that he's got a war coming up in about five weeks' time. He wouldn't be entering this, that he wouldn't be entering that walk unless he had planned for it and he, he was, you know, he, he, he wouldn't be messing about paying all that money if, unless he was fit. So what's he got that Sean Hans and John? Well, Sean Hans, Hans is, is the uh, the Miss Nelber. He's the the one person I I can't uh, say too much about because I haven't seen him training. I know what Jock's doing in training. I have a good idea of what Jock's doing. Jock had, took about a month out, I think, three or four weeks out since the parish, and I, I kind of know what he's been doing the last two months, and he's been keeping his hand in, so he's in good shape, and I'm pretty sure Michael is. He's done one or two long walks, but Sean Hans if you like, hasn't shown his hand uh, on the short events and, and very rarely does. So I don't know what he's up to, if you like. He sh- I just you, think this is Michael George's year. Well, you've been very bold with my money, thank you. <laughs> um, if Michael's going to win, who's going to get second place? The other person we haven't mentioned is Mark Hemsel. Mark Hemsel's or, Mark Hemsel can't be ruled out. Um, and of course, he, Ma- Maurice Berlando. Absolutely, he's been, another one. Uh, he's another one, absolutely. Um... I think Morris might be on the fringe of the top six. Um, Mark, Mark, uh, he's actually got the fourth or fifth fastest time, and he's the second quickest over this distance. He's just over seven hours. He walked alongside uh, Jock in the 50 miles in the Feynman's. The technicians, the other three, uh, maybe are just a bit too good. I, I think it could be one in about 6.40, 6.45. And that how, might be how just much, too quick. For, how's that compared with the record? The record is six fifty six twenty six. Um, I think Robbie's broken the seven hours three times. That was his quickest. What about the women's race? Well, the women's race. I noticed Sue Bigot uh, entered just in the last minute. Um, I don't really know where she, we're up to with her fitness wise. Uh, I, fa- I'm not sure where the record will go, but I fancy Janice will win.